Okay. Ah, sorry about that. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Andreas, and so I'm really excited to be here. Um, when I was looking at all the different talks that were going to be happening, um, I, I found everything to be really cool, but I felt like there was one thing missing, um, and that was talking about using React in the context of data visualizations. Um, at the end of the day, we're all front-end developers in some way or another, um, and a lot of interfaces these days have pretty rich visualizations. Um, some of them are pretty demanding uh, in terms of like the volume of data you have. Um, and there's, it's obviously something that people are interested in because there's so many different approaches that I've talked about in terms of how to solve this problem. Um, so when I put the lighting talk uh, proposal as well, I, it got to the point where a lot of people were saying, I really hope you have like some really nifty solution because this is a pretty tough problem. Um, and you know, when it comes to data visualizations, um, the, the standard thing to use is D3 because it's insanely powerful. Um, so one thing for me, uh, the, bo the bottom line is, uh, this is called D3 with React as opposed to D3 in React. Um, and I'll explain why. So I see this as um, a performance versus readability kind of problem. And readability might sound a bit weird, uh, but when I talk about readability, I'm, I'm, I mean, when you have an application, um, when you're building something as a team, you want your code base to be as standard as possible. You want people to be able to work on any part of the code base um, and make it feel really natural. Um, so you don't want to be mixing things. Uh, and then on the other side, you have performance. Uh, so we talked about the developer experience and we talked about the user experience. So user experience is getting really nice and responsive user interfaces, and developer experience is um, being in a situation where it's really easy to build things and not having to learn too much uh, and mix things up too much. Uh, in the context of D3 and React, um, in my personal experience when working with like large data sets and trying to actually visualize all that data in a user interface, um, I found that you have to take a bit of a hit when it comes to readability. Um, and go with performance. Um, so in, in that respect, uh, there has been a lot of talk about, hey, should you let React actually create everything and render and manage all the SVG, or should you let D3 do, the, do its thing and just literally just wrap it around? Um, and what I'm proposing and what I'm saying is when it comes to large-scale applications, which is what React's purpose is, to, to make it easier to build large-scale applications where data changes over time, um, at this point in time, I think we should be going with the performant way. Um, so let's see if I can bring this up. Cool. Okay. Um, so I started building um, a few reusable components where the focal point is um, you let D3 work with the DOM. Um, and I know this goes very much against what Sebastian just said uh, and all the different layers and like uh, his vision. Um, and I think that sounds really amazing actually, uh, but I don't think we're at that stage yet. Um, and at present, I think it's, it's nice to have a solution that caters for the performance perspective of what we have right now. Um, there are a bunch of different uh, D3 React libraries out there that tie into React really nicely but there isn't really anything where it lets D3 do most of the work and just using React as a simple wrapper around it. So that's what I was trying to do. Um, so it's, it's really based in, on, on this blog post by um, Daniel or David, I don't remember the name, stressed too many people, sorry. Um, but yeah, the idea was that you, know, you can map your remove, your create, and your update functions very closely to component did mount, component will update, and component will dismount. Um, so I sort of created a base chart class uh, that you can extend and you can create any type of chart, such as a bubble chart, and then you overwrite the creation method and the update as well, um, conscious of time here as well. And then it all comes together inside a nice chart wrapper that basically coincides uh, with you know, tying in everything with a component did mount, uh, on chart change, then you want to call the update, um, and all that. Um, and I have six seconds, uh, but this is a nice visualization of a bubble chart uh, with D3 and React. And I'm out of time. <laughs>